Hey everyone, it's Reverend Dr. Katie. I hope you're doing really, really well. It's a little bit late here. It's um, Southern Pacific, so it's a little bit um, later in the middle of, in the middle of the morning uh, for those of you who live farther away from California. And uh, I've just had a busy day, great day, um, highly metaphysically wonderful day, um, but just a long day. And so I wonder if you'll just join me whenever you're watching this, whether it's live or whether it's sometime in the future on recording, you'll just join me in a deep breath where you breathe in and then out. That felt so great. I'm going to do it again. Just that little act is a really lovely gift that you can give yourself just to help reset the body, the mind, and the spirit. At the end of the day, especially if the day wasn't a great day, but even if the day was a great day, sometimes we still just need resetting from all the energy that we put out there. And I know I was just putting a ton of energy out there today, talking to wonderful people, um, working with clients, spending time with my dog, talking to colleagues. It was all really, really good. And one of the topics that was really coming up um, of the past few days and some of the conversations I've been having with people and conversations I've been witnessing online is this relationship of our physical health, especially illness, to spirituality. And this is a really tricky one, right? Because we have all these examples of healings, for instance, in the Bible, and Jesus was a huge healer and healing was part of his ministry, yet many of us today do have to live with illnesses and with chronic illnesses, sometimes with invisible illnesses that no one else sees and then people don't always believe that people are really ill or that you're really ill if you do live with this chronic illness. Sometimes we have illnesses that are temporary, sometimes ones that are lifelong. And so sometimes people tend to demonize these illnesses and attribute them to some like demonic force or something like that. And that can be re-traumatizing when you actually do have an illness that you're struggling with, whether that's a physical illness or a mental illness. So let me take a few steps back and kind of explain some of this from a pastor point of view, which I'm a pastor, and also from a metaphysical point of view, and give you a few tips if you are someone who is not ill, but you are interacting with someone who is ill, maybe just a few tips for the road. So let's actually start with those. Um, so number one, we don't get to decide for anyone else what the cause of their illness is. So I'm going to repeat that because that one's really important. We don't get to decide for anyone else what the cause of their illness is. And that includes like advice if they haven't asked for it. So I witness a lot of people, you know, who have terrible migraine and people just throw advice at them all day long, even when they haven't asked for it. Um, sometimes advice is welcome, but sometimes it's not. So make sure that someone has asked your opinion before you give it, or at least say, hey, I, I, I know something that maybe worked for me, worked for something, someone else. Would you like that information? Um, that is actually huge energetically because you're respecting the other person's point in their life. Um, this, so that's my like, primary piece of advice. If you, my, my advice to you that you didn't ask for, but no, seriously, my advice for you, if you are someone who is fairly well and speaking with someone who's not, is don't offer unsolicited advice unless they specifically ask you for it or unless you get their okay first. Now, if you are the one dealing with a um, with an illness, whether that's a chronic illness or maybe a temporary one or one that you, you know the road is long, but you're going to get there eventually, whatever that is, I'm going to offer some words of wisdom, hopefully. And I'm saying this from someone who's fairly well. I mean, I have my ups and downs like anyone. I've struggled time to time with doing you know, with depression, but never real major. And I've never so far in my life had a really serious illness. So I'm saying all this with the perspective of a little bit of privilege. And so I acknowledge that, but you've all been asking. Um, so I want to offer what I can in this regard. So number one, um, if you do have this illness, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. All right. This is not something that you have because you are a bad person. It is something you have that you're learning to live with, whatever that is. 
So you might have something to learn from your illness. And I know this sounds really, really um, counterintuitive, but it's true. There might be something that you can learn about yourself from your illness. And this is where kind of cultivating that Buddhist mindset of detachment it can be really helpful because that can help us engage our illness on a different level. So I'll give you an example. Um, th this is not hu hugely major, and actually I'm doing a lot of yoga to help correct it, but my right side always feels a little off balance. Sometimes my right hip hurts, and this has been going on for 15 years um, for, since I was a younger person. Um, and I did a meditation once where I went into that joint and like had a conversation with it and asked what it had to teach me about balance in my life and about how I hold myself. Um, and my masculine side and my feminine side, well, that was quite revelatory. Right? I actually learned a lot from that. And so that's not nearly as, uh, as major as a serious chronic problem and serious chronic pain, and I recognize that, but I want to offer that as a meditative exercise for you. It's also possible that once we get into the story of an illness, we might find that we're undergoing this particular illness in order to learn something significant about ourselves. That can take so many different forms. It's hard to even get into here. But I've spoken with so many people who have struggled with serious diagnoses and then come out the other side, whether that other side is death and transition to heaven or whether that other side is becoming well again. They've told me that they've learned so much about themselves and about their spiritual selves. Not necessarily as a result of their illness, but their illness fast forwarded that learning somehow. Now, this seems really grossly unfair, I have to say. Um, and again, it's not, I'm not suggesting that we get the illnesses in order to do that, but a byproduct kind of of the illness or of the condition might be this sort of fast forwarded spiritual learning that we undergo. I bet this has happened to some of you. So I need to be really clear, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor of philosophy. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not offering you medical advice here. I'm offering you some sort of metaphysical tools that might be available to you. I also want to be really clear that there's an element of social justice in this because some populations are more predisposed to particular kinds of illnesses because of environmental reasons, because of systemic oppression, because of systemic racism. So for instance, lower socioeconomic neighborhoods might be exposed to much higher levels of toxins, which might lead to more chronic illnesses in those particular populations. As Christians, we need to be on top of that and advocates for eradicating this kind of this kind of systemic oppression. So be aware of this and be a champion um, for your neighborhoods, for all neighborhoods, not just yours, for the neighborhoods that aren't yours, um, that need to not be exposed to the, these harmful things in our environment. Also, I'm really convinced that trauma and traumatic events can trigger illnesses much quicker um, than when we don't have trauma, right? So if you are someone who has undergone a lot of trauma, and I'm finding a lot of people who deny their trauma because they don't, they experience their trauma as normative, but if you have undergone traumatic events, that can also trigger a lot of chronic illness or non-chronic illness, like speed illness, you know, that kind of comes and goes over the course of our life. And so we know that people have been asking these questions for a really long time, including in biblical times. People were asking, why is this happening to me? And we have a variety of answers, and different books and different authors of the Bible answer this question very differently. I think the really important part for you, for people that choose to work with me, is that you really approach this question for yourself with seriousness and with curiosity so that you're willing to find out some answers for yourself and learn how to support yourself during your time or lifetime of illness or chronicity. So this really applies to any problem, not only illness. Are you hostile towards the Bible? The difficulty reconciling your Christian journey with your metaphysics journey? Are you angry at God because of fill in the blank? 
whatever it may be. The same process applies to all of these problems because they're all chronically present in our lives. When problems are chronically present in our physical bodies, we are forced to pay attention to them in a different kind of way. But I also find that not dealing with these other questions and these other issues of anger and around the Bible and around God or sort of deep yearning that we have will start to manifest themselves in physical symptoms. I've seen it happen over and over and over again, and it's happened with me too. So another kind of tip for the road, and this applies to everyone, is that it's really unwise to declare anyone else's health issue to be caused by an external force. Because imagine this, someone is doing all that they can to deal with an illness, to manage it, to reduce your pain, and they're asking deep life questions like, why did this happen? And someone comes along and says, oh, well, it's your fault that this happened um, because you never dealt with that problem, or it's your fault because you're letting in a demonic force or something like that. That can really kind of undermine that person's journey. Um, so again, don't do that unless a person really asks you for your wisdom or your advice, and you feel like you have something to give in that regard. And still, I would not recommend telling them that they've opened themselves to demonic forces. You do not know that. <laughs> that is not the way to go. Um, with, with dealing with kind of care with people, even if you're saying it from a really, really loving point of view. Um, so that, that is my wisdom in that regard. What I'm interested in helping you figure out for yourself, and this might be on your behalf, it might be on behalf of someone that you love or that you have loved who has died as a result of one of these illnesses, is to figure out some potential quest answers to the why questions. Right, we all have why questions, and they probably all have compatible but different answers. And then using these metaphysical tools as spiritual tools to help us manage our conditions, but also to help us prevent conditions. So, for instance, if we learn about um, sort of chakra alignment, that might also be a preventive tool. It also might be a warning tool, like, oh, this is about to happen um, in our lives, and we can do some kind of quick steps to help mitigate some of that. And then I really love helping people dive into the Bible and to look at issues of health and wholeness because the Bible is so rich and so diverse in how it discusses and talks about health and wholeness at the physical level, at a spiritual level, at a mental emotional level. And it's a rich resource for us in our journey. And so that is some of the questions that have been coming to me. And that's what I have to offer you today. I see my camera is being kind of shaky. I hope this is all coming through okay. Um, okay, so I see a couple people said hello. Hi, hi, hi. It's great to see all of you. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off because actually my little dog is not feeling so good. So I'm going to go take care of him and do a little healing work on him tonight. Uh, and his name is Parker. So if you all send him really good thoughts, uh, I would appreciate that. And I'd love to hear your journey. So comment here below or you can private message me and I will talk to you soon. So blessings to everyone.